But first, Australia, we're told, is on the verge of a medical disaster as hospitals are told to ration critical intravenous fluids amid a global supply shortage. The Health Minister, Mark Butler, on Friday announced a response group to monitor the shortfall comprising state and territory health officials alongside relevant medical bodies, with concerns this shortage could last all year, with even surgeries being cancelled. Joining me now to discuss what's a worrying situation, Chair of the Australian Patients Association, Michelle Robbins. Michelle, thank you for your time. Look, this will be concerning to people watching at home. Um, what's the detail here? Because obviously this isn't just surgeries. I mean, what about uh, emergency presentations? What else could be impacted here? Yeah, thanks, Peter, for inviting me on. It is really quite concerning, and I definitely think that many patients and many Australians will be very concerned so when we think about IV fluid shortages, which is sterile salt water, we are actually thinking about the whole healthcare system. So that is for our ambulance services, through to GP clinics, to dialysis patients, as well as private and public hospitals. So the ramifications of this is quite extraordinary. And I think when you look at all of the uh, aspects to this, um, you know, the other thing that is really quite concerning is that metropolitan public hospitals uh, and private hospitals have resources where they can actually share those uh, IV fluids if they need to. But another uh, community is going to be in impacted is rural and regional communities. So they don't have access to as much uh, stock as you would see here in um, a city like Melbourne. So we have to be really concerned that that might uh, occur and we have to think about how we can use those resources wisely. And secondly, I think with elective surgery, that would probably be one of the main issues that would um, cause more hospital delays, waitlist delays if, if mm. physicians can't actually do the surgeries. So, so how did it get this bad, Michelle? How did it get left to get to a critical level like this without the government stepping in earlier than they did on Friday? Well, I think we do know that there's always uh, medicine shortages and the Therapeutic Goods Association does monitor this very closely and carefully with manufacturers. And I think that we have seen in the past, and that is pre-pandemic and pandemic, that we have shortages of medicines at various times. And I think we normally can really navigate that. But I think when we're thinking about having a global shortage as this, we're all going to be competing against uh, each, each market, each country for those limited resources. Mm. So I think we have to really think about um, how we're going to actually deal with this. And it is a good response that the uh, minister did announce that there was going to be a, a response group. And we're pleased to see the Australian Medical Association is part of that group because doctors are going to be at the forefront of this, particularly in the hospital setting. So. We really think that we need some more transparency. We need some more information because at this stage it is very uh, limited um, and there's a lot of mixed messages, mm. including do we actually need to ration at the moment or are we prioritising certain patients? They might be uh, the emergency department patients, intensive care patients and surgical patients. So we just really need some more information because at the end of the day, it's all about patient safety and we need to make sure that the patients are being treated um, accordingly. All right, well, clearly I'm not a medico, Michelle, so forgive my ignorance, but, but if we're talking about just sterile saline fluid or sterile salt water, um, can't we just make this in Australia or, or are we totally reliant on importing it from overseas? At the moment, we believe that we're totally reliant on importing it from overseas. And I think, you know, this is something that we should really have a, a really big discussion from a federal and state government perspective on we do have great capability here to manufacture uh, drugs uh, and medical supplies. And we, we saw that um, in the pandemic. So we saw that 
We had issues um, getting vaccines, face masks, gloves. Um, and we were able to all work as a community alongside the government to actually start to have manufacturing mm. sites here um, to relieve that burden. So I think when you're in a situation where there is a global um, shortage, we've got to really um, think about stockpiling, which is something that is not an efficient way of managing, or we have to start thinking about having those local capabilities so that we're not reliant on other markets around the globe to actually have well, Michelle, these medicines. I'll, I'll have to leave it there, but I'll get some questions. Apologies, I'll get some questions into the Minister's office about what's the genesis of this issue, but thank you for your time.